Oh, welcome back. You know, I think one of uh, the Gamel's favorite words was pattern. And I, I, like other words, I think there were, he had a vision in his mind of what it was. I don't recall him ever explaining it in care, with great deal of care. And of course, so now we all wind up with our own concept based on his, maybe pointing his finger and mentioning the patterning in a big painting or something like that, which is pretty nearly how it works. <laughs> But uh, you can look it up. You can look the word up online and see what kinds of meanings come to the word pattern. But for the purposes of pictures, the way we use them, uh, I'm going to just do a follow-up today. Here's Dr. Strange saying a very helpful definition of pattern. Um, and he's talking about the video just three or four videos ago. Um, is there already a video discussing what principles make a good pattern? Uh, maybe how to make a bad pattern better. So... You know, I talk about this in the composition class, and I haven't, uh, I thought for sure I'd done this. And I know we talked about silhouettes, and we included Greek pattern, Greek vases there, but this is a particular kind of a question, <clears throat> which is uh, sort of a, you know, it's in the, more of the class of a how-to than what is. So I'll try to do my best uh, to at least tell you about how we think about it, uh, how I was taught to think about it, and how I make use of it now. So I'm just going to use the Greek vases, though, nothing about that. And um, I'm going to get out my Mr. Laser here. All right, we have a laser. Do have a laser. Now let's see if I can get the first image. There we go. All right, now I apologize right now for the quality of these images. They I looked online and found very few that were very focused. So you're going to have to look at these casually anyway, I say with a, you know, sort of loosey-goosey uh, mindset. <clears throat> because um, you want don't want to be looking really tightly at them necessarily. You can. I do recommend the, um, I think they're Boardman's uh, books. There's two books on the uh, Greek vases. One of them particularly specializing in these red figures uh, ones, which is the ones, they're the ones I find uh, uh, the most the most interesting, <clears throat> actually the most skillful. And it was about those that Ang uh, uh, was, you know, he was talking about those when he, when he sit, told people to pay attention to the Greek vase. And um, <clears throat> so um, we're just going to review them just a little bit. Now, remember the two things in composition are always, first of all, um, uh, unity. And secondly, interest, you know, are you making it interesting? So the, more, the very simple uh, thing that's happening here, you just, for the short term, ignore the inside patterning is really just the big flat masses, right? The cutouts. Uh, that's the way we think of them, the, the sort of combined shapes they wind up making. If you look at the left one, you see my hot laser is going here. If you look at this one, this is, this is a very dominating total pattern here, right? Uh, it's more, um, so, so I say it's a, so it's a dark vase with a massively big pattern here all held together as one piece, pretty much. All the pieces seem to be rather attached. This may be being the exception over here on the right. And, uh, but what you can see though then is that you have a bunch of um, both dark patterns and light patterns to talk about. And there, there really is no such significance as a negative shape, they're just pattern. And pattern is the dark pattern. There's a light pattern, okay. And um, again, this is this is the way I think about it, the way I use it. So I'm addressing first of all. I, I mentioned there's this massive unity of one big pattern. Well, look at the incredible amount of interest though around that pattern, right? The little like the little legs coming off this side over here, and another scrawny area of interest, skinny little things over here. So there are areas, you'll notice there are areas of interest. There are areas of greater interest in a pattern, uh, at least a pattern in a painting. Now, if you do a wall pattern, you're typically talking about, well, there may be an area of dominant interest in the little pattern thing. The second time you use it, you're using the same exact thing again. Usually they're in predictable rows. It's not always true. But um, I differentiate painting because it basically has one, it's one total pattern, right? Um, but the patterning process is that of, of uh, relating the darks to the darks and the lights to the lights. So we can be that simple about it. Okay, um, 
so you, I mentioned areas of dominant interest. You see this area here is very interesting. This area is very interesting right here. And this will be the area, shall we say, of the third level of interest. And so that's the sort of thing you might be aware of. But be aware also of, so in terms of the variety of a picture, we want all the spots, all the dark spots, to be different in size, different in shape. You want them to have different gestures. And you want them, but then, okay, all different, each varied, but you want them to relate to each other, right? So there's a certain sort of a curviness here that nicely relates, shall we say, to this area up here. Um, by the way, we're talking about good patterns. We're talking about expressive patterns. So I, I, I better not go past that. I started going past that um, too quickly. So here you see what you have is a major dark, some, some medium to lesser darks, and then you have smaller ones and gradually smaller, and then you have a bunch of what I'd call you know, really dinky little darks. And something similar is happening with the, uh, <clears throat> with the, um, with the red area. You know, there's some areas that are more dominatingly large. Um, like you could think of the area around the feet, down below the feet, as not being as big. Um, you know, I would assume that this picture ought to have a flat floor. I can't prove that it should. So just ignore this if the picture looks like it needs rotation. But, okay. So let's see what else we can say about this. So a pattern is, is <clears throat> varied. So you're not trying to, you don't want to make it predictable. You want these shapes not to be accidental. You want them to be, you know, vigorously related to each other. You want them to be different from each other and you want them to interplay with each other. That's good patterning, okay? Now, on top of that, you expect the shapes in this kind of patterning to when they form up and make a silhouette, for example, to express something. So this area is very clearly a hand doing something. These are clearly the feet, you know. So to the extent that a pattern has, has a role to play, it, it, part of what pattern does well is what silhouettes do well. They actually describe by outline uh, a real unit, a unit of, of, of nature. But they also, of course, describe shapes and there's so much shape interest i'm looking at the curves now here back of leg here back of the, this curve of hand and what if you're really doing good designing these things will be just like in the rest of design and painting they will be interrelated they will be playing off each other so this feels quite interesting in relation to this and to this so you expect the curves to relate to the curves you expect things that are like doing similar things to relate the God does this all the time in his dancers, uh, making the feet, each one do a different thing, and the whole set of them doing something very interesting. Uh, but that could be said of anything like a straight line, that could be said of the curve sets, uh, it could be said of any other kind of unit. It, it, um, so, yeah, interrelatedness though, variety, interrelatedness. And then let's talk about what happens around when you go around the outside of a shape. You see that there's interest there. There's actual drawing there that describes the form, but it also just makes it more interesting. Uh, you can see this one comes around, does a blippy thing here, a belt. There's that, that. There's a lot of stuff. So it's some of it's information, but it's also just interesting. It's this nice timing in the dips and the blobs. And typically in cloth, you have some choices there. For example, he could have had this cloth come out here and made more of a dip if he chose to rather than running straight down here, more or less straight down there. So, yeah, let's, you know, maybe I'll pick up more of the same, but you're going to see that in all these pictures. You're going to see the, the um, in the next picture here, which is unfortunately fuzzed, you expect the big impression to be rather fascinating, right? Just typical of all design. So whenever you have a pattern <clears throat> in a picture, uh, you, you expect it in itself, if it separates unto itself, you expect it to be interesting. And interesting, again, has that everything to do with variety. Uh, the going together is not the interesting part. That's, that's, that's how it interplays. But the interesting part is, oh, let's say, for example, if you have a grand oval here, I think that, uh, that's a different kind of shape, never mind. How about we just say something like this? Here is a great shape with a dark in the middle, and here is another big shape with two darks in the middle. So there's a they're both that's done differently, but there's an interrelatedness about them, and they're both interesting. This appears to be a musical instrument, perhaps over here on this left one. Uh, again, um, if you look at the set, you'll see they're almost humorous. The set of the straight lines or the stick-like lines 
you see there's clearly four of them, the two legs over here, and this one over here, and this one, and the big long one up the middle, which is the spear. And you can see that they, um, that they make a, a rather a jocular, a rather a jaunty little set. Uh, fun to look at, right? Uh, again, when you're talking about the spots, you're looking, you're going to see that each of the dark spots, this is basically, this is dominated by lights. The dark spots are, um, you see, the greater one. Or maybe that's the second one. Maybe this is the greater one, depending on how you want to think about it. Yeah, probably you'd say that. And then this one, and then maybe down to this mass here, and then down to this and this. Uh, so I'm including this 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 whole area around this left guy uh, as the great as part of the great mass. Um, so in making it interesting, timing is important. You know, you have a mass here, then you have a dark mass, then you have a skinnier one here, then you have an irregular one here. They seem to be trucking along. There seems to be a nice rhythm between them. These are all the th sorts of things you could do to make your patterns better. Just be aware of what dark spots or what that flat unit is doing in relation to the other set of flat units. And give me some fun. Give me some entertainment. I'm looking at how these down here are relating across the board to this guy way over here. And this whole thing is a run in itself. And then it trucks across here. But that's patterning and it's entertaining. Keep remembering your job is to be entertaining. Um, um, so we're just seeing more of the same. One of the things you'll notice about these pictures, I'm going to take the one on the right as an example, is that they're relatively simple. They're simple enough, not so cluttered that you can't make out what's going on, but not so simple that they're boring to look at and, um, you know, and just maybe placed well. Uh, but, <clears throat> you know, because these are complete pictures into themselves, we're talking about place, good placement. When you're talking about patterning in pictures, it may or may not be uh, a thing unto itself. It could be like the set of the darks could be more dominatingly to the left, while the set of the lights could be more dominatingly to the right, and they could be not balanced across the center. These guys tend to be balanced across the center. Again, you see with the simplicity of the great shapes, and yet they're nice interrelatedness. So here's the greatest one, maybe, and then this one. And you can talk about maybe that is the third, and this is a breakup of two more, and plus whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. What matters is how you, how they, how beautifully they interplay with each other. Uh, how they just feel good together. I mean, this is just an aesthetic problem. A pattern is just like everything else. We're just trying to find some magic there. And we do mean things like the word beauty. We, we mean, we mean uh, uh, rightness. You know, beauty is a fascinating word. There's an element of rightness for it to be beautiful. Uh, but harmonious is another one of those excellent words, you know. So if you have a pattern there, you want the pattern stuff looking together. That just means they harmonize. That means they hang together. Um, all right. Uh, I don't know how much to say about the other one. Um, the, um, the use of internal detail on that one makes it slightly less of a pure pattern problem, although it's everything's being done with, like these are hard, thicker stripes, these are thinner stripes on this individual. Uh, so there, you know, there are those kinds of sets. Uh, and, and if you want to call them those three types, there's three of them, you can count these guys as being of that set, one of these. You see how those are sort of repetitious pattern sets? And I find that interesting. I find that really interesting. And if you, again, if, if a person who really has an aesthetic eye, an artist, has been there, there'll be something interesting and related in a comforted, you know, very comfortable rightness kind of a way. Uh, again, they'll be harmonized is another word for it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, following the same principles. <clears throat> and then lastly, I think, is this one. <clears throat> but you can see what I'm talking about now. You take simple patterns, you have variety by the size of the masses, the dark mass. They're all different in size. They're all different in gesture. They're all different in in uh, shape. And yet, they look fascinatingly good together, right? And that's what you expect your patterning to do. So um, I guess to maybe rerun it, we're talking about that. We're talking about uh, interrelatedness of like things. So the straight line things, the straight line things, you expect them to actually look good together. Uh, that's design, that's, that's just design 101, you know. You have straight lines in the spears over here. And, you know, and so here you might have more expression in the sense that 
these guys are more war. I don't know if this this doesn't appear to be a warlike moment, but these 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 spear lines, they have this conflicting thing going on. So it does have that hectic feeling of being something more related to uh, to a um, uh, conflict. Um, yeah. So this one, by the way, has a kind of an interesting balance. This guy being on the one side, this one being on the other side, and it's a one, two, three. You balance me with these guys here with the shields. Again, you'll notice the two shields are done different from each other, and their design, their designs are different. But one is more front on, and one is laid down and from the more from the side view. You see how different the helmets are from each other. These are the things you do to to make good patterns. Don't don't bore me to death. So make them different but make them harmonize. <clears throat> it's really the larger conversation. Uh, I'm going to look and see if there's anything else I, I should uh, talk about. <clears throat> I think that was the last of them, yeah. And I'm going to come back, I think, in a second. But uh, let me just talk to you about the kinds of things I talk about typically in a, in a, in a class. So, is that the, so the uh, interrelatedness of likes we talked about. Uh, like the spears and so on, um, in a relationships of curves, uh, uh, you know, visual type things, right? And uh, sometimes, like I showed you, the busy, the three busy things, the interrelationship of things, okay? Notice how the groupings are balanced across the center. Well, in our case, you're going to expect the grouping to feel good to the rectangle, no matter what it is, whatever the pattern you're making is, once you see it. And the harder part of painting probably is actually to recognize these patterns for what they are, so you can make the best work out of them. Uh, <clears throat> so then again, the variety of the uh, of the dark units in relation to each other, or the light units in relation to each other, variety in every way, size variety, uh, <clears throat> shape variety, gesture variety, you know, and again, uh, and even busyness variety. Some shapes are more interesting than others, and uh, busy, busy. I meant to say having more bumps or whatever, and. Um, uh, yeah, and yet they're, how they hang together. Notice that they harmonize. Just keep watching the whole, and your job is to keep after them until they do. Um, and notice how you know when, with how much these guys contribute. If they can contribute more to the story, that is to say, to the realism, and I mean that really just meaning the the readability of the thing as an object to the extent that that's important because it is important it's not like we just say there's no such thing as the subject <laughs> as <laughs> the and objects actually do matter that matters that they're, they're well drawn in that for that matter it's just but in the case it's one of the beautiful things about this greek vase thing is that sort of lost and found thing that it uh that it, it implies uh, when you don't look close at it, especially there's this whole series of things that are just lost and found. So we're really not talking about objects. We're talking about that el that aspect of an object that tells us something. And because we don't get every little line on the object, and I'm talking about pure patterning now, because we don't get every little line on the object, we have to make the patterning talk for us. Okay. So when there's lost areas or a pattern, two or three figures turn into one big abstraction. Well, you take full advantage wherever the silhouette happens. Make sure it talks. Make sure it talks the language of the uh, of the of the object description. And uh, so, um, and one thing I didn't mention was how each area needs to be important. It needs to be interesting in itself, in some way. So I often refer to this as the scenes in a movie or something like that. And uh, what, what you expect is for each unit of uh, each dark object, for example, to be actually interesting in some level, fascinating on some level. You don't want that to bore me any more than you want the whole to bore me. And um, so, again, you're going to want to have be aware of the variety within that shape and whether it's just amusing as a pure abstraction. Um, yeah, and then, of course, you're going to notice the, the major masses, that not only that they have gestures and they're fun and they're alive, but how the gestures feel to each other because they'll be tending to certain kinds of movements. I've had better images in the past and uh, I had a lot of trouble finding... Uh, old stuff this time, so for whatever. But I think this will do nicely anyway. <clears throat> uh, you'll notice that most of these things actually do have a dominant spot, a center of interest, which I think is the right way to think about it. Well, that doesn't always pan out in a uh, in pure patternist, patternistic stuff. Uh, but I'm going to be talking about um, some stuff in the next video having to do with 
that will address some of this as well. Uh, but be aware, um, be aware of the idea of an area of central interest. Um, and so that's what I pointed out before, you know, you would say, and that's visual interest, right? So that's clearly right here, right? There's a lot of interesting stuff around here, but this has the most, you know, for bunches of reasons. Uh, first, it's in the middle. Secondly, it's probably the busiest, uh, has the most interesting things happening, the most variety of different things happening. And one by some of the ways of describing what makes a center. The same thing would be true over here, where their center is going to be this, this sort of conjoining of the the sort of addressing of these two together. It doesn't mean this isn't going to be really interesting over on the on the shield, but notice the idea of a dominant spot and then lesser areas. Each of them has ha, tends to have it. Um, so, yeah. Let's see if that's uh, yeah, that's covered. Yeah, yeah. Now, even one like this, you expect some area uh, to be most interesting. And it, when I say area of interest, I'm just talking about anything, right? But is that the most interesting spot? I think it is. Again, centralizing it, elevating it. These are significant things to actually make that area interesting. You can see the same thing as here. Really, the interest is where these guys are facing each other and where their hands are doing. That's really the most interesting aspect of this picture. And again, there are areas of secondary, secondary levels of interest. Uh, again, remember that interest is produced by the, by the, uh, the complexity, the variety the, you know, of, of types of shapes, um, the complexity of the uh, types of, um, well, I guess you'd actually say f sort of human units or uh, object units, that whole thing. Uh, and then again, the centralization and the uh, elevation tend to do that. doesn't mean so, but you could have a, a, a level, a, an area of interest down low uh, in a picture, so don't misunderstand on that one. Okay, I think I've said enough. And I apologize for not being particularly energized tonight, but no particularly good excuse. Uh, but I do uh, hope that begins to answer your question, uh, Dr. Strange, and um, that um, uh, and that you come back or others come back if they want to discuss this on some other level. Remember, this is the Greek vase. It's just the basis of the whole conversation. But And I don't show in this particular one, but I think I will talk in the next one about the... Um, the sorts of things that pattern do in a painting, and uh, which is probably of greater interest to you, but I've covered the basic elements of it now. Okay. All right. Well, again, thank you for all your donations, folks, subscribing, sharing, um, commenting, all the rest. Uh, much appreciated, and uh, we'll see you in the very next one.